For some reason, Eastern Europe seems to be the home of the machine pistol. Between the Russians and the Czech, the Stechkin and the Scorpion, it's a class that's really unique to Eastern Europe. The Scorpion machine pistol was invented by a gentleman named Miloslav Rybar, and he actually did this as his graduate thesis for the Czech Military Training Institute. And it's a, uh, it's a credit to his design genius that the ultimate gun that was adopted uh, just a few years later changed very little from his initial design. It's adopted in 1961 as the VZ-61 and is easily recognizable today by its very distinct silhouette. The VZ-61 feeds from detachable box magazines. There are 10 and, as in this case, 20 round capacity, 20 rounders. It is equipped with a folding buttstock, folds over the top of the weapon in this manner, so that the operator can fire it from the shoulder if necessary, or close the stock to use it as a pistol or just so that it can fit in a holster and it can be more compact. It kind of is evocative of the, uh, the Cold War spy uh, period of the uh, 1960s, 1970s. The gun service life was 1961 to 1979. And um, it was an, it's an interesting little uh, East European answer to the Uzi and the HK. What the Scorpion did was uh, allow very, very compact firepower uh, for uh, police and security personnel in uh, Czechoslovakia, and also there was a Yugoslavian version of the gun licensed. The Czechs have a great tradition of arms design, and they, they hit on, on the PDW really before anybody had a requirement for one. And so the gun could be fired semi-automatic or it could be fired fully automatic at a very high rate of fire. The Scorpion is an interesting moment in time gun. It was adopted by Czech security forces uh, in 1961. Uh, interestingly, it's, it's chambered in 32 ACP, which is an unusual cartridge for a gun adopted in the 1960s to be chambered in. It's obviously larger than most traditional pistols, more cumbersome, but it is, uh, it is selective fire. It does have a fully automatic function. Uh, you carry it in the holster with a 10 round magazine and then you have a uh, magazine pouch with a pair of 20 round magazines. It has seen uh, uh, some uh, usefulness as a police sidearm and in uh, uh, special forces units in the military and in uh, uh, military positions where they want a little more firepower than a pistol but uh, uh, can't really accommodate a long arm like a submachine gun or a carbine. Now the Uzi fires from the open bolt. It's blowback, meaning that it doesn't lock up. It uses that bolt mass and the inertia of the forward movement to close the bolt up. The VZ-61 Scorpion, on the other hand, fires from the closed bolt. Although it's a blowback firearm, and although this bolt mass is forward in the telescoping design, it has to be all the way forward for the hammer to fall, setting off the cartridge. And then because it's a blowback firearm, the bolt is thrown rearward after it's fired so that it can pick up another cartridge, slam it into the chamber, and be ready for that hammer to fall again to, f to set the firearm off. But then something magic goes on inside of this weapon while it's in operation. Because housed inside the VZ-61's pistol grip is a rate-reducing device. And here, Viroslav Rebar comes up with a brilliant way of overcoming high cyclic rates of fire. The reducer itself is a spring-actuated piston housed inside the pistol grip. As the bolt comes through travel after firing, it compresses the piston briefly, and, and, and in doing so, it pulls down this little device right here, which is a retaining hook. That hook 
grabs the back of the bolt and ever so briefly, it retards the movement of the bolt, holding the bolt to the rear just long enough for the rate reducer spring tension to overcome, move back up and allow the bolt to be re released. What this does is it brings the cyclic rate of fire down from over a thousand rounds per minute to a more controllable 850 rounds per minute. Another one of the mechanical means that he turned to to make this firearm work was timing. And the timing device comes in the form of a sear that's located right there that when the trigger is not depressed, this sear doesn't do anything. But when you're in the fully automatic mode and the trigger is pulled, the bolt will come back, reset the trigger, it will remain in this down and locked position until the bolt is released. Once the bolt comes forward and depresses this disconnector arm, the hammer comes forward again. So, although it doesn't have a lockup like we're used to, although it is a blowback firearm with a telescoping bolt, it is nevertheless a firearm that has a reduced cyclic rate of fire and it can't fire until the bolt is in the fully seated and forward position and the bolt is fully in battery with a round in the chamber. The problem with VZ-61 Scorpions is that we just can't get them in the United States today because of the National Firearms Act, because of import bans. It's not possible to have one of these. In fact, we're not aware of any of them transferable on the NFA registry. But that doesn't mean that you can never get your hands on a VC-61 Scorpion because VC-61 Scorpions are gaining in popularity in the United States today. Today, it's possible to own a VC-61 in this configuration. And in this configuration, it is a fully legal, semi-auto only pistol. With the fall of communism, we're starting to see semi-automatic only versions of the Scorpion come onto the market. Anyhow, that's all the time that we have for this week. If you like this show and you're not an NRA member, you need to join right now. Go to AmericanRifleman.org. I'm Mark Keefe, and I'll see you next week right here on American Rifleman Television.